This um, information that we are sharing with you guys comes from a veterinarian by the name of Ghana Sham. Oh, Sham Bay. That's my best guess. I'm gonna dry coffee. Um, so we just kind of want to run down the list. <laughs> um, there are some obvious things, and then there's some less obvious things that we just wanted to bring up. Um, the first one on the list is avocados. Um, that one, um, what it says here is that it contains it contains a toxin called persin, P-E-R-S-I-N, not S-O-N, persin, um, and it causes vomiting and diarrhea, um, can be deadly. So um, while it says here it's a healthy fat for humans, it is too high in fat for dogs, um, which puts them at risk of pancreatitis. So um, I imagine the pancreatitis is more a situation if you have somebody who is um, like really big on the um, like uncooked foods diet and they're doing it consistently. Um, that's probably where you're getting the risk of pancreatitis. If they just get into some an avocado that you have, that's probably not pancreatitis worthy. That's probably going to cause like diarrhea and vomiting, the body trying to expel it. Pancreatitis comes from eating it over time and the body actually working to digest it and metabolize it. Um, and the pancreas not being able to handle it. Exactly. So, um, and that's the too high in fat. Because I can see here how um, avocados being considered a healthy fat for people would can be accidentally translated as this will be good for my dog because it is a nice healthy fat. Um, because not everything translates directly from yeah. people to dogs, dogs to people. Yeah, the whole carnivore diet that is, you know, that is a fad right now mm -hmm. for, for for people. Just because your dog is a carnivore uh, does not mean that they should be eating the same things that you should be on that diet. So And their, um, their systems are so, like, backwards from ours. That um, so, like medications, for example, most not all, but most, and I don't want to spe make any specifications because I don't want people to be self-dosing. But most medications, the, the dogs, um, their livers, their organs are so poor at metabolizing them that veterinarians have to give them at doses that are human strength, and so like. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard, like, during this whole war on drugs scenario. Um, I don't know if you've heard about um, um, when people, when they've seen people doctor shopping, they had to start tracking veterinarian offices because um, there were people, they were catching people who were um, trying to get pain prescriptions for their dog so that they could take them because they were dosed at the same strength. Um, and so, but that's how different the dogs, um, or how wonky their bodies are, is that some things are like proportionate to people, you know, where, you know, Paris here is 16 pounds or maybe 20 pounds. No, no that's just fine. Anyway. Um, you would think it would be dosed down to their level, you know, where, um, I'm, you know, 135 pounds and she's a hundred and, or she's, <laughs> not a hundred. She's, she's, she's just, you know, eighteen pounds. Um, yeah. Uh, so, that, so that's not like a ratio, but there are other things that are. Like, yeah. So I'm, I, yeah, I'm 180 pounds. So if we take one of our dogs, it's 18 pounds. You would think that medication would be dosed at one tenth the strength yeah. of me, but in fact, it's not because their their bodies metabolize food and they're, it's, they're so poor yeah. at metabolizing it yeah. they need a whole lot yeah. um but um but it's the, it's not that with everything it's just like certain things it's not everything and so that's what i mean when like their bodies are backwards and you can't just apply everything that you know about people or if you're looking at your dog's diet you can't just apply like your own nutritional knowledge about people and what what is good for people and just assume that that's good for dogs. 
Um, you want to go to the next one? Yeah. Sorry, that was kind of like just a general overview. Yeah. Um, cherries. Yeah, this is one. Um, the big thing about cherries is um, it's not the actual cherry part. Um, it's not, it's not it's, the meat. Yeah, it's not the meat of the cherry. It's the stems, leaves, and pits um, because they contain cyanide. Um, and I think we're all familiar with cyanide. I don't think we can say that. I don't think, there's a lot of words we can't say. No, I think we're talking about cyanide. Um, and so what the vet has to say about this is he says the only part of a cherry that does not contain cyanide is the fleshy part around the pit. However, we don't recommend feeding that to your dog either. Cherries can get caught in your pup's airway and become a choking hazard, which is, um, oh boy. you know, fair. Okay. But there's also, you know, most a lot of cherries, when people think of cherries, I think are of the um, pitted cherries. Um, and cherry. so, yeah. but those, they still have the stems. And so what you would be worried of when you see those cherries in your um, refrigerator or in the pantry or at the grocery store, um, the stems are still um, negative. Um, grapes and raisins. Um, both grapes and their dried form raisins are known to be highly toxic to dogs. It only takes a few grapes or raisins to cause a sudden kidney failure in your dog. And we are going to have a um, real life story from Jane and Minnie and John about Minnie's little misadventures um, at the festival. Um, and the next one is tomatoes. Um, while fully ripened tomatoes are safe, the green part of the plant contains a substance called solanine, which is toxic to dogs. Um, and so they suggest, of course, just don't give your dogs tomatoes and well, we won't have any problems. Um, or, if you, or if you have tomato plants, like if you grow your own tomatoes, mm. be sure that you are keeping them, um, you know, wired or, you know, there's some sort of barrier so that your dog can't just go up and start chewing on the tomatoes and thus the leaves. Ooh, the, very, very good one. Um, so the next one is mushrooms, and it says, so only a fraction of existing mushroom species are known to be poisonous to dogs. Those that are can be deadly. Identifying mushrooms can be tricky, even for experts. Um, and so therefore, obviously, just don't give them mushrooms. It's usually the safer answer. Are you all done? Um, next one is onions. They should never eat onions. They contain a compound that damages their red blood cells, um, which causes anemia. Um, and so when it comes to onions, they mean like onions and anything related. And so they say, it goes on to say, um, don't give anything or allow anything that contains onion, onion powder, or onion flakes. And the same goes for leeks, garlic, and chives, which like onions are all part of the allium family of plants, whatever that is. Um, but they are all part of the same family. And so they're all, they have similar compounds, similar structures, and they work the same way. And so um, they can have the same effects usually. You can see Robin's puppies. Uh, hi, Charlotte. Hey, yeah, I'm talking about you. Charlotte was up on the tray with her head trying to get stuff from mm -hmm. uh, her uh, from Robin's bowl. So I want to. Hey, hey. Um, oh, yes. oh yes. doggies in here, Dad. My girl's gonna go Um, so the next one is garlic, and it, um, you know, we just mentioned garlic, and so all it really says is that of, of that family with the onions, garlic is the most toxic of them. Um, otherwise, it causes severe damage to red blood cells, um, can cause them to rupture. Um, next one is wild berries. That's another vague one that just says, um, you know, to not allow it because there can be a few... There can be some poisonous ones, and it's hard to tell the difference. Um, and so, just don't let your dog eat wild berries unless it's a plant you're growing. Like we've got raspberry bush right around the corner, like around our house, and um, we let our dogs eat um, 
raspberries off of there as long as it doesn't as long as raspberries don't come up on this list then they won't be they won't be for long um next one is rhubarb um this one's kind of interesting commonly called the pie plant rhubarb is frequently grown to use in desserts um however it contains soluble oxalate crystals making it toxic to pets if ingested in large in a quantities rhubarb can cause kidney failure um, whenever you see crystals like that causing kidney failure, it's usually really painful. Um, next one. Okay, so the next one, I pulled out some things to talk about. So I mentioned stuff like this. Um, Sugar-free candy and gum. There we go. Yeah, yeah so, so this is... Right. So... Um, so this is the... The, the big ones for this list that we really wanted to touch on is um, chocolate and then the xylitol. Because xylitol, from this one going further down the list, xylitol is like a common theme in everything. And so, um, and one of the last things, or I was looking at some of our products and I was looking for the xylitol. And, you know, this is one of these reduced fat things, sugar-free, and xylitol is a, a sweetener. And so I was like, you know, this one word is a little suspicious. It's maltitol. And so I was like, I'm going to look that up. And sure enough, maltitol is a sweetener. And let me find my screenshot so I can read to you guys exactly what it said. Um, when you're checking labels, be aware that maltitol may also be listed as sorbitol or as xylitol. It's sometimes even just listed as sugar alcohol, since it falls under this category. So it can be sneaky under sugar alcohol, we'll just hide it completely. Yeah, and something else to think, like, so this is just like a, um, you know, a package of gum. No, I probably don't want to say the name or whatever, but... Nowhere on the label does it say sugar free. There's nothing on here that says anything about being sugar free. That's the or... big thing is avoiding sugar free yeah. candy and gum because xylitol is a common yeah. ingredient used to sweeten those candies. Yeah, and but the number one ingredient in this is xylitol. So that means that, you know, of your piece of gum, what makes up the bulk of that gum is xylitol. And then the next uh, is gum base. So, like, there's more xylitol in this than the actual chewing gum. But again, it doesn't say sugar free anywhere on it. So you could you could have someone be like, "Oh, my dog, you know, got a hold of this. It should be fine." Just check the ingredients. Always check the ingredients. And then if you have something and you're like, "Oh, this is sugar free. I better check the ingredients. Make sure they're not using xylitol." And you look on here and you say. Maltitol? Well, that's not that's not sold. That's, that's, that's not xylitol. xylitol. So yes, it is. It, can, it certainly can be because that's just um, it's kind of encompassing a number of of uh, sweeteners. <laughs> All this pudding, our kids don't eat. Yeah. <laughs> we've got tons of pudding. Yeah, and they even wanted the snack bags. They're like, oh, snack bags. <laughs> yeah, that's why I got them. <laughs> huh. um, but anyway, so the xylitol, it's. Um, also called birch sugar. Um, so it's a low calorie sugar replacement, artificial sweetener, whatever you want to call it, causes severe illness and or death in dogs. Um, and so you want to check ingredients on all labels, anything that's like sweet or sh something that sounds sugary or sounds super sweet or desserty. Um, just check to see if, because even in something that's naturally sweet or there's something that they're already using sugar, they, sometimes they will add it to assist in the sweetening process. You know, even naturally sweet items, they will sweeten to kind of just help, um, make it tastier for the consumer. Um, and so a lot of the things that come following this have the xylitol and then as well as the chocolate when we get to it, um. But the next item is some peanut butters and other nut butters. And I know that a lot of nut butters are, um, a lot of nut butters are, or, let me bring this a little bit closer. Far away. Nut butters are becoming a really trendy thing right now. Like, um, yeah. what's it, is it sun, sunflower yeah, butter? Sun, yeah, sunflower butter. Um, sunflower butter and, um, um, 
Of course, another one, but either way. Yeah. Um, some peanut butters do have um, this xylitol in it, but small amounts of xylitol can cause low blood sugar, seizures, liver failure, and um, and the worst thing. I don't think I can wait to say this word too much. You can say it a little bit, but I think it's like they said they will strike you if you reach like a certain amount, but can cause the TH. The big bad ending that we will all see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, I guess it doesn't always have to be bad, but the, the big the, ending. The guy in the black cloak and the sigh. Oh, the black cloak. I was picturing a white one. <laughs> Where are you planning to go? Oh, I was saying, like, the, the, whenever they talk about the skeleton oh. being yeah, yeah. Oh. Like the character. <laughs> um. The next one is flavored waters. So like Mio, if you've seen, if you have Mio or um, we also have a store generic here. Um, I did not see xylitol on these, but that was also before I discovered the maltitol um, fraud. I'm still not seeing, I'm not seeing any of these xylitol ingredients in either of these. Um, but caffeine is in this one, and um, caffeine is on this list. Caffeine is a no-no, but I think a lot of people know that. But for those who don't, because we aren't born with this knowledge, um, ice cream. Ice cream is um, another sneaky one because places, places like... Um, uh, I can't, I don't, maybe I don't want to name them, but different shops will give puff cups. And um, depending on, you just want to be careful with what your dog is getting because um, dairy products just in general usually aren't very good for dogs. Um, they can't process the lactose. Their dogs are all essentially lactose intolerant. Um, and so if you look at the, their diets through the lens of lactose intolerance, it might might help you see a little bit better kind of where ice cream and other dairy products fall into that. Um, yeah. But were you going to say something? I was just going to say, so all those those pup cones and whatnot. The pup cups? Yeah, the pup cups that uh, different uh, stores hand out. Not the best for your dog. Yeah, just don't do them. Don't do them frequently. If you take your dog, um, you know, maybe make it like, you know, once every couple of weeks or um, just not, don't make it a regular routine sort of thing. Um, but anyway, um, so here's what, what it says on the, this article. From the ice cream isn't a great treat from your pup. Dogs can't process the lactose and milk products like ice cream. Dogs who do get a look at your cone may experience digestive troubles like vomiting. Um, and so it says dogs may get a lick of your cone. I don't like phrases like that because it, um, it implies that it's only going to take like this amount, you know, this tiny amount. All they need to do is just one little lick. And um, to, to in order for it to cause like vomiting and diarrhea, gas and stomach pain and pancreatitis, um, especially the gas and stomach pain um, that's um, usually occurring more after something has been ingested and the body is really working to, to metabolize and break this product down into usable byproducts. And, um, and so just getting a lick of the cone isn't going to cause pancreatitis. If the dog eats the whole cone and you start seeing them have some discomfort in their abdominal area, then it might be worth getting checked out. Um, and so just, Always just look at it through the lens that they're lactose intolerant. Um, and then it goes on to mention that ice, with ice cream in particular, you usually have, you know, other ingredients to be weary of. So like if it's chocolate um, or if it has nuts, um, you just want to be able to make sure you um, keep an eye on those things. Because ice cream is another one that has xylitol. Um, yay, next on the list is chocolate. So. Chocolate is 
Um, well, I'll just read it directly, and then we'll talk about it. Chocolate is poisonous to dogs because it contains theobromine and caffeine. Both of these components cause potentially deadly heart and central nervous system problems in dogs. The darker the chocolate, the more theobromine it contains. Therefore, it takes less semi-sweet dark chocolate to cause toxicity than milk chocolate. Some chocolate also contains xylitol, which is harmful for dogs. Call your vet or a pet poison helpline immediately if you think your dog has eaten chocolate. Be prepared to tell them the type and approximate amount of chocolate your dog ate to help determine the appropriate treatment. You can also use this chocolate toxicity calculator. I love that thing, and so I'm going to actually, I'll be sure to link all of this in, um, in the description. Um, so milk chocolate, and especially when we're talking like Hershey's chocolate that's like processed and um, actually has very little chocolate in it compared to like all the crap they put in it to make it taste like Hershey. Um, like that's usually a lot less concerning than the, the dark chocolate. Drew and I love really, really, really dark chocolate. And so, um, that gourmet chocolate that you'll see in the grocery store, will say like 72%, um, um, uh, dark cocoa, I think is what it says. Yeah. Cocoa. Um, that is like the suit. That's the stuff where it's like, they get a sniff of it and you want to, you want to call it that. Um, Um, always be concerned. I don't want to, I don't want to send out the message that, um, milk chocolate is not serious and is not something to be concerned about because if your dog eats enough of it, it will most definitely be concerning and be serious. And so, um, you know, especially with Halloween just passing, if, um, you know, keep your Halloween candy up, make sure your kids keep it up because something like Halloween candy if your dog gets into it, it's not going to matter what's dark chocolate and what's milk chocolate because it's so much chocolate that it's not going to matter. Um, uh, when I'm talking about this seriousness of milk chocolate versus dark chocolate, it's more, I'm talking about like if they get a piece, if they get like, um, like Drew and I, when we have, when we get these um, um, packages of dark chocolate, um, it'll usually be like in either single serving sizes or double serving sizes. And um, it's like one of those, if one of our dogs got it, that would be extremely toxic. We would have to go to the vet immediately. Um, if it was the same size of a bar in milk chocolate it would probably be more something that is just going to cause them to vomit, um, or, or you know, diarrhea. or diarrhea. Yeah. Um, but we have had the misfortune of having, um, oh, I don't think it was with Drew. It was, um, like when I was with my family, um, not not ex-husband, not a previous yeah, I life. Um, we had a dog eat um, Halloween candy, and um, and she did fine other than, like, vomiting and diarrhea. She was just ill. Um, and so and so that was, like, milk chocolate. It was, a, I think it was, like, a moderate amount. Um, be, moderate amount being, like, um, yesteryear's uh, fun size Hershey milk chocolates. So like, um, what we got for Halloween candy 25 years ago. Um, and so basically, you know, chocolate, I think that, um, when people talk about what's poisonous to dogs, a lot of people have chocolate come to mind and, um, it's important to remember that there is a whole lot more than just chocolate that is toxic to dogs. And even when we're talking about chocolate, it's more the dark chocolate that we want to be super really like vigilant about. Um, and um, what do I want to say about that? Um, Um, like the grapes, for example. So Jan and John had many, she got sick and she just went immediately into kidney failure. And, and it, it had occurred at a festival and, um, you know, it was, they were doing all the right things. They were doing, um, you know, they had all their, their kitchen looked like, you know, it was puppy proofed. They, didn't have foods that they shouldn't have. They had all the right things. They, they did it all right. They, they do it all right. And, um, it doesn't take much 
to um, be somewhere or have your dog get into something of somebody else's who either doesn't know or isn't, you know, well versed and is prepared to, you know, have puppy proofed their lunch that day. You know, a lot of people have things like grapes in their lunches every day. So I don't fault anybody for having grapes in their lunches. Um, or raisins. Like, like or raisins. That's um, that's another one. Um, Kelsey mentioned that in the comments that, you know, raisins are grapes, duh. And, but I never even, you know, I and it's a good point. And it never even occurred to me. I don't know why it didn't because raisins I knew about, but it didn't like, it didn't translate in my head that raisins, grapes are gonna have the same effect. But anyway, um, so anyway, um, but with the chocolate, it's that theobromine ingredient. That is what um, makes chocolate um, toxic. And then that plus the caffeine. Um, and they do have a pet poison hot, hotline. And so I will actually put that in the description. I'll put that in all of our descriptions in like the default settings. The pet poison helpline so that if anybody should ever need to call a pet poison hotline or if anybody ever comes on to the chat um, and says, my dog just ate this, do I need to be concerned? Um, you guys can all re refer them to the, the number that's in our description. Um, but I'm also going to link, I'm going to link this whole article, but I'm also going to link the chocolate toxicity calculator because it's kind of cool. Um, the next one is pudding snacks, um, and it says to keep them away from your dog. It can, can contain xylitol or chocolate, which are toxic to dogs. And that's this one that I looked up. I looked at the back because I looked at this. I and So they said just putting snacks in general and, um, and didn't specify the sugar-free xylitol ones. And so we had a regular, and so I went and looked at these, and it didn't have, it didn't have the xylitol. Let me see if it has this multitol. Um, no, it doesn't have it. Um, and so I was thought, okay, for sure, I'm going to go down to the basement and we have this other stuff downstairs that is the sugar free that the kids don't like and don't eat. Um, and so I thought for sure it would have a xylitol, but, um, coming to find out, no, it doesn't, but it does have, does have this suspicious ingredient, mul multitol. And so as I was getting ready to start the live stream, I kept coming back and forth and Drew was like, did you start live? Did you start live? And I was like, I got to look this up now. Um, and but multitol, let me read to you guys um, what it says about multitol. Um, Besides adding sweetness in place of sugar, multitol and other sugar alcohols help keep food moist and help prevent browning. And so that's important to note because it's not just going to be in sugar-free products. It's going to be used for other reasons. And so don't think that just because it's not a sugar-free product that it is free from being from this ingredient being used. Um, and so always check your labels. Um, but anyway, when you're checking labels, be aware that maltitol may also be listed as sorbitol or xylitol. And so what that means is this substance is listed on labels as one of those three the three names, the maltitol, the sorbitol, and the xylitol. And so you have the same concerns for all three, all three of those um, names because they're the very same thing. Um, and it goes on to say it's sometimes even listed just as sugar alcohol, which is scary um, since it falls under this category. It's also scary because you shouldn't be able to just be like, oh, this falls under this category. So we're just gonna lump it in and just kind of gloss over oh, it. Oh, are you doing some- uh, Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> oh no, I was saying, are you doing some, some research on the whole sugar alcohol thing? Yeah, Cause that is, it's that ridiculous. Just, they, yeah, like, oh, sometimes it's just listed under sugar alcohol. So we yeah. just want to specify that it happens to be this toxic ingredient to dogs. So, yeah, it'll kill your dog. Yeah, just, oh, yeah. Like, oh, never mind. We'll just list it as a sugar alcohol. Sure. Never mind that it'll kill your dog if it, your dog gets it. So, yeah, just, I mean, and probably a good rule of thumb would be just to avoid uh, anything with artificial sweeteners and, and make sure your, your dog isn't getting them. Um, the next one on caffeine says, and so I'm kind of curious, you know, what is it about caffeine that's toxic? And it doesn't want really to say what is toxic. It just says that it is. Um, 
But it says um, they're also a lot more sensitive to caffeine. Um, and that just a small amount can be toxic. And but it doesn't really say why or what. Um, and that just says to make sure coffee grounds are disposed of or curious puppy can't get to them. Um, and also remember that it's not only in coffee. Um, I think the big takeaway, is there is a takeaway from this little blurb about caffeine. I'm a little disappointed with it. We're going to have to look into this one, Dad. Yeah. Um, the takeaway to keep in mind is that they are going to be much more sensitive to it. And so if your dog gets any um, caffeine, if they get a chocolate covered espresso bean that falls on the floor, that might, <laughs> it might impact them a little bit more than you are prepared for. Uh, and for obvious reasons, sports and energy drinks are on the list. Um, they contain caffeine and then all kinds of other you know, um, not good. I'm sure things. that there are the ones with uh, zero oh, calories. Here we go. Caffeine. Caffeine can cause issues like seizures, tremors, abnormal heart rhythms, vomiting, and diarrhea. That makes sense because it's speeding everything up. So it's yeah. diarrhea. Use that. In the oh, abnormal heart rhythms. Yeah, that all makes sense. Okay. Um, you know, so there are the um, caffeine <laughs> issues that they're relaying sound an awful lot like a caffeine overdose in people and so i it sounds like it's more just that dogs are so sensitive to caffeine it's like they're an overdose in people is more like a toxicity to dogs if you just give them caffeine at all all those effects it has is just going to go into overdrive really fast heart rate which looks like it probably causes abnormal heart rhythms um and then seizures and tremors i'll make i don't know if you guys have ever then, um, you know, that for me, it was when I was in college and was up all night and then had to be up early in the morning for exams. And I would take like two and a half no dose pills and go to school. And I remember I was, I had an exam and my hand was shaking so much. I couldn't fill in the circle on the exam with the pencil um, because my hand was so jerky. I couldn't like keep it still enough to stay within that goofy little circle. But anyway. So um, I think that that's how the caffeine is related. Um, and then they bring up xylitol again. Um, in addition to caffeine, many sports drinks contain xylitol. Yeah, I wonder if this vet just has it out for uh, xylitol. Uh, well, I was going to say that if you think about it, the, the, the sports drinks these days, now it's like you know, no sugar added and uh, yeah. zero sugars. Uh, so it's got to have some sort of artificial sweetener in there to make it taste halfway decent so and a lot of these ones that are following are um because they contain some of the previous ingredients that i mentioned and so tea and tea bags um essentially it's issue the vet's issue with tea is the caffeine content it just says to keep your canine companion away from your teacup and away from tea bags um because the caffeine content can make it poisonous um, soda, um, because it is a source of caffeine. Um, some sodas, especially if they're labeled as sugar-free, also contain xylitol. Both caffeine and xylitol are toxic to dogs. And so this is a really good ex example of why I like to find articles like this, because, yes, soda is toxic to dogs, but I want to know if I should be concerned if Bella spills her Fanta orange and Vienna comes and licks it up, or... Um, well, if I should be more concerned with my diet or my regular Coke, um, if that makes sense. Like, I just, I don't like when they lump together and say, uh, this, like, this has, the, um, most of the time these have this ingredient. So we're just going to label all soda as being toxic. And so I like to find what it is, the specific ingredient that is toxic so that you know what in that category is still safe. Um, yeah, so I imagine that you can make your own. That you'd be most worried about Diet Coke because it would be sugar free, so artificial. Sugar free sweetener. and caffeinated. Yeah. Um, um, next one is baked goods, but again, it says that um, the concerns with baked goods are chocolate, xylitol, and caffeine. So um, don't you don't need to cross off and throw away all of your baked goods that are on the counter. <clears throat> um, just keep in mind of the, the chocolate, the xylitol, and the caffeine content. Um, the next item is alcohol. 
Um, and I think for obvious reasons, I don't think we really need to explain that one. But what it says is this. Dogs do not consume beverages or foods that contain alcohol. Some dogs are attracted to alcoholic drinks, so be sure to, you do not leave alcoholic beverages unattended. Alcohol depresses the central nervous system and causes the following symptoms in dogs. And I imagine it's like a similar alcohol poisoning um, is what it looks like. But vomiting, diarrhea, depression, drooling, decreased coordination, difficulty breathing. Drunk you got a drunk dog. Drunk dog. <laughs> you got a drunk dog. <laughs> Weakness, collapse, tremors, coma, and D-E-A-T-H. Um, so, yeah, if you find your dog throwing back <laughs> too many, <laughs> be a little concerned. Um, next one is macadamia nuts. Oh. If you are a fan of macadamia nuts, keep them stored well out of reach of curious paws. All it takes are a few to poison a medium-sized dogs. Um, and then if dogs with macadamia nut poisoning will show weakness, depression, vomiting, tremors, and hyperthermia. Hyperthermia is when your body is too hot. And I find it interesting that they didn't say fever. Um, yeah. and so I'm curious what that's about. Like a lot of times they'll just say a fever. And so I'm curious if. It's like just an elevated body temperature that maybe isn't a fever. That's it's weird, just though. elevated. Yeah, that, that seems strange though. Yeah, because I can't call it a fever. Um, the next one is raw and undercooked meat. And there's another really big, that's another really big um, trend right now is feeding your dogs um, raw and undercooked meals. Um, but again, no matter how, I don't, I'm not sure what the current like, arguments for and against are I'm just for safety yeah. <laughs> safety and well-being of your pets and so when we see big trends and um waves of trendy things pass through that impact dogs health like they thought the grain free thing was innocent enough nope nope do not give your cavalier grain free um and so I'm super weary of um other um like extreme diets for dogs uh, but anyway, what it says about raw and undercooked meat, um, it says recently some dog owners have embraced raw feeding. This trend advocates feeding your puppy raw diet to simulate what their ancestors ate in the wild. However, just because wild dogs eat raw meat doesn't mean your pet dog should. Raw or undercooked meat and eggs carry bacteria such as salmonella, E. coli, and listeria that can make humans and dogs sick. Now, listeria, they, um, no, it's not listeria they have a vaccine for. Okay. Never mind, ignore what I just said. I'm thinking of lepto. Um, and they're, I know they're, they're giving the salmonella and E. coli, like the obvious ones that we all are familiar with, but there's actually a lot more bacteria that can, um, that can make dogs sick. It doesn't have to be E. coli or salmonella. There's all kinds of bacteria that cause um, GI upset that is really... Um, the diarrhea doggy. Uh, yeah, the thing about the thing about diarrhea and vomiting in dogs is that unlike people, um, they don't have a whole lot of volume, and they get dehydrated quick. And so, you know, people people can vomit a few times. But people, hey, people can vomit for Daisy. Why are you being so mean? People can vomit for a couple of days for their bodies trying to expel um, like foreign material, foreign germs, substances that isn't good for the system, and still survive and you know thrive and do well. Um, dogs can't do that like people can. Um, they can't just keep vomiting their fluids and without intake of fluids and do it. They will decline very quickly. Um, and so when, when you see or you read about these different things that can cause vomiting and diarrhea, um, if your dog is vomiting like over and over and you don't know what for, um, like sometimes, you know, our moms, they will vomit when their puppies and nurse and we know what that's from. And so we know what that's from. And so we can also keep an eye on it and manage it. 
But if your dog is vomiting and you don't know the cause and they're not stopping, then, um, then this is why your dog, your vet will ask what your dog has um, been into or maybe where they've been. Like um, Jan and John had recently been to that festival and so they were able to pinpoint the grape. Um, but they are actually, they're really a good example. This is probably a good lead into sharing their story because they were doing everything right. Um, and, and they didn't wait when many started getting sick. They, they gave her, you know, a little bit of time yeah. to, to spring back. But when she didn't, like it was the next morning, they, they called their vet. Um, they did not wait. Yeah. And it was really important because she was in kidney failure. So it was really important that they um, were on top of it. And, um, you know, like I said, people can, people are made, like vomiting is made as a way for the body to cope with these stupid things we ingest, like alcohol. <laughs> but dog, dogs are a lot smarter about what they put in their bodies usually. Um, they're better about um, detecting things with their scent and... Um, hmm. Not always, though. Yeah, not always. Sometimes they eat silly things, huh? Sometimes you do. Huh. But um, I think that's mostly the end of... The next one is bones. Um, you may have heard that giving your dog cooked bones is unsafe. However, many vets believe that all bones pose a health risk. We are now an anti-bone family, in case you don't know. Um, uh, no, it's not true. I thought we were. Oh, we or wait, no, no, no. We're anti... Um, um, it's the big bones. The, the, yeah, fake raw bones, rawhide bones. Yeah, we're, we are anti rawhide bones. But um, you know, we, yeah, we give the, the dogs antlers. Oh, yeah, yeah, we give them antlers. Yeah. Um, but here's what this is about bones. Um, several injuries and illnesses can result from dogs chewing on bones, including broken teeth, mouth and tongue injuries, um, GI, which is gastrointestinal tract blockages, bones getting stuck around the dog's lower jaw. Vomiting, diarrhea, choking, injuries to the stomach and intestine, bleeding from the rectum, bone getting stuck in the stomach. All this sounds like things that can happen from bone, like getting lodged. Yeah, and then swallowing a bone that's just a little too big for... There are many alternatives to chewing products on the market for dogs. Um, and then the last one is moldy food. <laughs> um, so you may not intentionally give your dog moldy food. Although I'm kind of wondering, like, did they put that up there? Because they're like, you know, people are up there. Are people out there who are seeing their um, bag of moldy bread and just giving it to their dog. And so I'm curious if that's why they put that on there. Well, I mean, you know, if, hey, if we didn't have any money to feed our dogs, like yeah. if we suddenly had no way to feed our dogs and uh, like we were trying to just feed our kids and like. I'd be giving them whatever I could. Right, yeah, I guess that's true. That's so I can that's why I can see them putting it on there mm. as a why. Um so it says you may not intentionally give your dog moldy food, but a curious nose may locate something you've tossed in the garbage. Mold produces toxin. All right. Mm. A f a f aflato aflatoxin which can cause liver failure. If dogs eat food from the garbage or compo compost pile, other mild toxin can cause tremors, seizures, vomiting, irregular heartbeat, lack of coordination, and or DATH. Keep all garbage cans securely covered where your dog cannot access them. Is it ever okay for my dog to eat human food? Your dog should get most of their calories from their regular diet. You want to share pet safe snacks with your pup? Some toxin free options include carrots, celery, cooked pumpkin, cauliflower, popcorn, apples, bananas, cucumbers, strawberries, xylitol free peanut butter, <laughs> <laughs> and cheese. Cheese? I thought cheese is a dairy and all they give us all is a dairy talk. I guess I was she, the one giving the kitchen. Well, no, talk. she's um, the lactose has been processed out of it because oh. bacteria have eaten the lactose. And uh, oh, here's a good point. Snacks should make up no more than ten percent of your dog's calories. Um, I know there's a lot of um, I should say a lot of. There are families or dog families that do a lot of dog treats. Um, it's almost like the, the dog's diet. It's like half their meals, and then the other half, it's like just constant training throughout the day. Yeah, the like day. they just reward, they reward with treats like every 
single time they do a command, which I mean, you know, you do you, but it <laughs> kind of seems to a little defeat the purpose, I think, yeah. of training if you're yeah. just giving up a trade every time. I'm, I've been to a uh, a training course where the instructors, like they had this pouch where they kept the dog's yeah. treats, but it's basically, I think it was just dog food, but they said that that was how the dog got like half of its calorie intake was by the rewarding. I was like, that seems really ridiculous. Well, it, it makes sense, I think, for a dog in that, like, that dog has that job. Right. Like, has like, a, right. Class. Yeah, I, think, yeah, okay. but okay. I don't think they were suggesting that that be everybody's right, yeah. plan. Because it was probably just dog kibble, you know? Oh, no, they were suggesting it. Because they were, oh. like, trying to sell the little Oh, jeez, 50%? Yeah. Dang. So, um, so if the dog gets two cups of food. Oh, then... people food also tends to be higher in fat and sugar than dog food. A dog's digestive system has difficulty processing fatty foods. So only offer your puppy a small taste of any table scraps. Too much fat and sugar could lead to stomach upset, obesity, and pancreatitis. Um, signs of food poisoning in your dog. Ooh, yeah, that's the good part. Vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite. Um, real quickly, I just want to mention, um, I've seen people like copy paste this. And so I just want to mention it. Um, when a, right. an article is talking about health and they're talking about a symptom and they list anorexia as a symptom, <laughs> anorexia, when it's listed as a symptom, they don't mean that the person is coming in, thinks they're fat or the dog thinks they're fat and is not feeding as like a psychological result. They just mean like loss of appetite. Like, Anorexia like the, means no appetite. Like the dog is not eating. Yeah, the dog okay. does not want to eat. Yeah, the dog will not eat. Um, yeah. But that's in a lot of veterinary materials, and I think it gets misunderstood. Yeah, anor uh, yeah anorexia is not. Or like um, if, they, if they say your dog is anorexic, it's not that the dog is starving itself because it's trying to lose weight. It's because <laughs> the dog is just Oh, just yeah, not eating. we had a family member tell us that said the dog is anorexic. Um, bloody poop, of course, always get bloody poop checked out. Um, seizures, always get seizures checked out. Tremors, hyperactivity. Um, and when they say hyperactivity, they mean apart from your dog's baseline. So if your dog is just having the energetic day, you know what your dog's energetic days look like. But is your dog like going over the top? That's what they mean. Um, and lethargy, same thing for lethargic. You know your dog's slow days. You know your dog's, you know what they are like when they just, they're just crabby and don't feel like doing anything. And then there are times when your dog will not get up and it is completely out of character to you, like to the point where you are wondering if your dog is okay. That's lethargy. And there's a big difference between the two. And, um, we're not between the two, but like ah. between, um, the layman's use of the word lethargy and what we mean when in our casual day to day conversation, talking about being lethargic versus when a medical journal will keep their eyes open and maintain, um, wakefulness. Um, Marciato. Basically. Yeah. Pretty much done. Sorry. <laughs> Um, unsteadiness when standing or walking, um, lack of coordination, bruising or bleeding, and blood in the urine. Um, and you should, um, no, if you no, see, no. so if you see like one of those things, you don't need to panic that your dog has food oh, poisoning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it will be a cluster. And so you, if you see a cluster of these things and your dog ate something that you're concerned about, um, so, you know, if your dog has, has anything to be concerned about, always call your vet and ask him for his guidance. You picked him for a reason. He knows your dog. He knows what is, um, what the current research says. He knows what things look like. He's seen it before. Mm -hmm. He's seen the presentation of different poison cases. Um, and so he will direct you always on what to do and if he wants you to take your dog in. Um, if you know or suspect that your dog has consumed something, you can always call the pet poison hotline. Um, there are, I will, I'm going to find one and put it in the description. 
Puppies. <laughs> Is that going? If it's um, Piper. Piper has been so such a bully the last. It is Piper. What's going on over here? Hmm? There she is. Hey there, Silver Stitches. It's nice to see you. Silver Stitches is on? Yeah. Oh, is that, is, was that the end of the. Oh. It's just about the end. Oh, you didn't hear that one. Take your bed or take your dog into the bed if you're concerned. Yep, that's basically. It says right here at the bottom. It says at the bottom line: the bottom dogs line. explore the world with their mouths and easily pick up food items left within their reach. Several common food items can be poisonous to dogs. Know what human deadly to your dog and keep them out of paws reach. Be aware of common signs of food poisoning in dogs, and if you suspect your dog is eating something toxic, call your vet immediately. And the references include the American College of Veterinary Pharmacists, and <laughs> ahead of time, 30 bread recipes with yeast. <laughs> um, but outside of that, they do have 33 more references, including the American Cow Club. The AKC? <laughs> Um, I'm gonna take this thing back to the living room. Excuse me, doggies. Excuse me, girls. Excuse me. That's pretty nice to have. Yeah, having this to sit on. Yeah. I think if we had all the dogs in here, it probably would have been a little bit crazy. It would have been nice if the dogs had some more delay. Oh, yeah. You know what? This this was a good trial run. Then. Because I did, I did enjoy 